Welcome back, you big bunch of goons, to Rage 2. My name is Camel, and today what I've got for you is a basics guide for Rage 2. Now, timestamps for each of the topics can be found down in the description, along with links to my social media and to my other Rage 2 guides. Be sure to check all that out. But for now, a quick intro. Rage 2 is a single-player, first-person shooter open-world game developed by Avalanche Studios and id Software. It's got big guns, uniquely cool guns, it's got vehicles, nano trident abilities, aka superpowers, uh, monsters, bandits, evil authority rule, a big open world and tons of stuff to explore and destroy. I also won't be running through all the stuff that we experienced during the opening of the game or tutorial if you want to call it that. So you know stuff like you can shoot your gun by clicking shoot. We'll skip all that stuff. So here is my red hot advice for Rage 2. Firstly, don't rush the main missions. Just like in Skyrim, you don't really want to go from Riverwood to fighting Alduin. You want to go out and about, check out some other factions, pick up some powerful items, all that stuff. You want to do exactly the same in Rage 2. When you leave the tutorial, you will have two guns and one ability, and there's like eight guns and eight abilities. So yeah, get out into the world and go pick up some stuff. And I actually found it to be much better gradually finding and unlocking new weapons and abilities because it gives you time to adjust to each weapon and ability as you pick it up and integrate it into your playstyle and get a feel for each one individually rather than just being overwhelmed and having all things at the start of the game. With that said, I do think you should kind of go out of your way a little bit to go pick up all the abilities and all the weapons so you know you can make the most of your time in Rage 2. I will definitely have guides for all that. So go find all your abilities and go find all your weapons before trying to save the world. Now, arcs are where you will unlock new nano trite abilities and some new weapons, so go exploring and go arc raiding. You might find Noah. Now, despite my spiel about not rushing the main missions, it's definitely worth playing the first few hours of the main missions so you unlock access to projects from all three of the main mission characters. Projects are basically like skill trees or talent trees or perk trees, and to gain access to all three, you'd have to do the first main mission for each of the three main characters. John Marshall, whose projects focus on combat, i.e. upgrading your weapons. Lusum Hagar, whose projects focus on engineering, i.e. upgrading crafting and secondary items. And Dr. Kvasir, whose projects focus on nanotrites, i.e. upgrading your abilities. So once you've done the first main mission, for each of the three main characters, clearing the sewers for John, sussing out the enemy for Lusum, and delivering the Ecopod for Dr. Kvisir, you will have unlocked access to all of the projects, therefore all of the skill trees. So it's definitely worth your time following the main missions for the first few hours. But once that's done, I definitely stick by my words earlier and suggest going all over and doing whatever you want. Now the currencies in the game are a bit weird, but simple once laid out. Money is the currency used for buying and selling, acquired by finding pink littered crates, finishing certain missions, clearing areas, and of course selling stuff to vendors. Feltrite is the blue stuff, and is used for unlocking access to more powerful upgrades for your gear. Feltrite can be found inside crates, inside boxes, inside Feltrite engines dropped by enemies harvested from Feltrite deposits, harvested from Feltrite meteors, rewarded by finishing certain missions and clearing certain areas. Now it's also important to note that any Feltrite that lands on the ground only lasts for 10 seconds. So if you kill a bunch of enemies and they drop Feltrite everywhere, make sure to go over to that Feltrite and pick it up before it vanishes. We also have project points, which are gained by completing tasks and mainly from clearing locations around the map. These are used to unlock project tree perks. In layman's terms, they are used to make your character better through upgrades, the details of which I will explain in a minute. Mutant Bash TV tokens are gained by participating in the Mutant Bash TV events and missions, and also in some rare cases, scattered around the Mutant Bash TV arena. These are used at the Mutant Bash TV gift shops, where we can buy all the cool stuff, weapon upgrades, skins, ammo, the usual, with a few unique bits and bobs. Now there are a bunch of other upgrade materials, such as nanotrite boosters, used to purchase upgrades for your nanotrite abilities, weapon mod cores, these are used to purchase upgrades for your weapons, neuronic interfaces, life glands, and arc tech cores, 
all three of which you can take to the cyber dock in Wellspring to exchange for one augmentation upgrade, such as an increase to health, an increase to damage, or an increase to overdrive effectiveness and longevity. There are also auto parts. Now this is a currency which is used to purchase upgrades for your car, Phoenix, which we'll speak more about in a second. Now that might seem really complicated, but all of the above can primarily be obtained from arc chests, one or two of which will usually be found at any big important location. They can also be purchased from vendors and obtained by other means like killing boss enemies or finishing certain missions. But for the most part, vendors and art chests will be your best bet for these rarer, more specific currencies or upgrade materials as they're known. With the exception of auto parts, which can be obtained easily by stashing new vehicles, completing vehicle combat missions, and completing anything vehicle based. So money and Feltrant, you'll get this constantly throughout gameplay. Project points, you'll get this for clearing stuff, Mutant Bash TV, go to Mutant Bash TV Arena to get that tokens, and all the rest you'll pick up infrequently from arc chests and vendors. Now let's talk about vehicles. Vehicles are used for transportation, exploration, racing, and warfare. You will have a primary vehicle called Phoenix, which you can upgrade and make more powerful using the auto parts we spoke of earlier. This will be your default vehicle ready to go for you whenever you fast travel somewhere or exit a town. It can also be repaired by simply hopping out and facing the engine and using focus. This makes it a whole hell of a lot easier to maintain your car than having to drive back to a town and repair it. But along with Phoenix, there are a number of different vehicles that we can find throughout the game and collect. Some are unlocked by meeting specific criteria or by completing specific missions. Most of them, however, can just be found out and about in the wasteland. The rule is, if you see it and it still has wheels, you can drive it. When you find a vehicle to collect it, all you need to do is jump into it and then drive it back to a trade town and then store it in the garage. This will unlock that specific vehicle as an option in your garage for the rest of the game, which at any time, provided you're in an area with enough flat space around you, you can go to your garage tab and summon your vehicle of choice for a price of course. This will cost you money. Generally, the bigger it is, the more expensive it will be to summon. This means you do not have to keep track of where you parked what vehicle. You can summon any vehicle that you have collected anywhere, anytime, at a cost. It is 0% immersion, 100% good gameplay mechanic. Now vehicle combat is actually something I steered clear of because I thought it would just be a whole other realm of gameplay I'd have to wrap my head around. But really, it's super simple. You have a car with guns, the enemy has a car with guns, kill the enemy before they kill you, and do that while driving, that's it. Another quick tip for vehicles is, use your vehicle as a weapon, don't just find other cars with it, you can drive into people standing around, or you can just park it next to a bandit camp and mow them down with your gun. Downside to this being that they don't drop feltrite and other bits and bobs when you kill them, the upside being you get to mow down a whole area of enemies with your car. Now the interface is rather self-explanatory. The map shows you the map. Each location is one of three colors, pink, orange, and blue. Pink locations for John Marshall. Clearing these pink locations will gain experience with John Marshall. Orange is for Lusum Hagar. Clearing orange locations will gain experience with Lusum Hagar. And blue for Dr. Kvasir. Clearing blue locations will gain experience with him. Very, very simple. Now, once you discover a major location on the map, you can actually fast travel. So yep, yeah, that answers your question. Yes, there is fast travel. Once you clear out a location on the map, it will be grayed out. This just lets you know that you've been there and you've done everything there is to do there. In the next tab, we have the log. This shows you all of your missions where you can track objectives or change your current mission. Simple as that. The inventory is where your inventory is, where you can browse the items in your inventory. It's crazy stuff, I know. Now crafting is also done through your inventory tab. Now to craft items, you'll need to have purchased the schematics from a vendor, and then you can go into your inventory tab, select the item you wanna craft, and provided you have the schematics and the required components, you'll be able to craft that selected item, such as wing sticks, grenades, drones, health infusions, blah, blah, blah. But with that said, it is seriously always worth checking with a vendor what they have for sale, even though you might be thinking, I don't need ammo, I don't need grenades, I don't need to see the vendor, go to the vendor, they might just be carrying something extra, 
that you'll be able to put to good use. The next tab we have the Nano Trance tab. In here we can see all of our abilities and clicking on any of them will let us see the upgrades available for each of our abilities. Of course, to upgrade Nanotrite abilities, you need Nanotrite boosters, which is the currency we spoke of earlier that you'll mostly get from Arc Chests. The next tab is the Weapons tab, which is exactly the same as the Nanotrites one. We get to see all our weapons. If we click on any specific weapon, that will just open up the upgrades for that specific weapon. Of course, to upgrade a weapon, you'll need the currency, the Weapon Core Mods, which for the most part, you'll be getting from Arc Chests. In the next tab we have projects, this is the same as the last two, where you can upgrade less specific things via the three different character projects. Again, John Marshall's projects focus on combat, Lucem Hagar's projects focus on engineering, and Dr. Kvasir's projects focus on nanotrites. To unlock any of the projects, you will need that currency we spoke of earlier, project points, which you will get mostly from clearing out areas. And finally we have the vehicles tab, which lets you upgrade Phoenix, lets you inspect everything in your garage, everything you've collected, and it lets you summon vehicles. And just some random general tips that don't really fit anywhere. Visual cues are a big part of Rage 2. The most prevalent being anything pink. If it's pink, it's probably important. If you need to push a button, if you need to climb a ladder, if you need to scan your hand, if you need to turn a wheel, whatever it is, it will probably be painted pink. The whole pink isn't just for marketing, it's a visual cue in the game that marks progress. So if you get stuck on a mission or a location, just take a second, scan the area, and look for visual cues, such as pink things, or like big red X's on buildings, which means there's gonna be treasure inside, so explore that area, literally X marks the spot. Things like lights in dark areas are a big visual cue, literally drawing you to the light flares, things like this. But also look in dark places, all indoor and outdoor locations have plenty of things tucked away that you will need to find by looking hard. Pick up absolutely everything, explore everywhere, and take your time. It's a fun game, it's a very beautiful game, I think anyway. And um, yeah, no need to rush. A driving tip, use the handbrake. When you turn, smash the handbrake and slam some Tokyo Drift through a dirty, dirty corner. And lastly, a mega tip for you. Um, when you arrive at a location, if you hold down your nanotrite focus, will be shown the objectives to clear the location and how many of each item of interest is at the location, if there is any there in the first place. This is really good because it's enough mystery, but it's also like when you do actually clear it, it will tell you so you don't spend another 30 minutes going through an actually empty location wondering if you got everything. It will tell you if you got everything. And speaking of getting everything, I think that's it. So there you have it ladies and gentlemen, I've been Camel and this has been my basics guide for Rage 2. Undoubtedly I've forgotten something so be sure to leave any of your hot tips down below to help your fellow rangers. I do hope this video helped you out and if it did you'll be very interested in checking out my other Rage 2 videos that I've already done. Links to them can be found down in the description. Now down there in the old description you can find links to my social media. Be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram for really boring posts and if you'd like to support the channel in a more personal way you can can become a heroic patron on Patreon, or you can sponsor the channel right here, or you can just post, you know, livestock or money to my house. As I'm sure you know, all of my time and energy goes into making these videos that I create for you to enjoy, so your support is most appreciated and welcomed in any and all forms. So thank you very much for watching, thank you for supporting the channel, and I'll see you very shortly in the next video. I'll see you there soon.